Good morning, children. Good morning. It's another great day. We have wonderful weather. It is already October, and we still can be outside without a jacket sometimes. Isn't that awesome? Yes. It's amazing. Today we want to talk about God is our compass. What does that mean? Does anyone know what a compass is? Erin? It's a thing that means that you see the directions right way to go. That's right. I did buy a small compass so you could see a little bit what a compass looks like. It's quite small and it's not the greatest, but at least you can see what a compass looks like, right? A compass helps you to find your direction back home if you are lost. And um, that's what we want to look at today is how can we follow God the way he wants us to follow? Um, what I really think it is, it's like we're, I want to teach you the fear of the Lord. Some people don't like that word. Some people even think that we don't need to fear God. But if I read my Bible, I see it completely different. Um, some people, why they do not want to, want to know about the fear of the Lord is simply because of their past. Because they were always told that God is an angry God. God is ready to strike them down when they do something wrong. A lot of it has to do with their past. And now they're so focused on that God is love that they forget that God has two sides. Just like there is good and evil, so is there a righteous, holy God. And if we don't follow him completely, that there are consequences. Just like when you children, you disobey your parents. There are consequences that you're facing. It doesn't mean that you're no longer your parent's child. But you do understand if you do something wrong, that there's going to be consequences. And that is what we need to understand that about our Heavenly Father. That he is very serious and he wants us to follow him completely, not halfway. Because the Lord said that he's going to spit out the lukewarm. He wants us to follow him with all of our heart and all of our strength and all of our might. So we're going to look at 15 Bible verses. I know that is a lot, but they were all so good. And I felt like they were just really connecting the dots together on how can we really fear God. We don't need to be afraid of him, but we need to understand that if we disobey, that there's going to be consequences. I feel like if we're going to have fear of the Lord, that is just protecting us from so many sins. Because if we don't have fear of the Lord, like some people say, you know, there is grace for everything. It doesn't matter. Like we can do this or do that. It's not that big of a deal because there is grace. Just because Jesus paid our sins does not mean that we can live an ungodly life. God still requires of us to live a holy and clean life and to be different from the world. So let us go to 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. It says, All scriptures is inspired by God and is useful to teach us that what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. You see, the scripture is there. And pay close attention as we further going to look into the word of God. It says all scripture, not some. All scripture. It does not mean that the Old Testament is no longer for us today. I remember my dad always saying that. There was nothing wrong with reading the Old Testament, but it was not for us today. Like, it was basically trash for us. Like, it doesn't matter if you read it, but we don't need it. Well, here it says all scripture. And if we look into history, Jewish history, the Old Testament and New Testament was never, ever supposed to be divided. It is one whole book for the, for the Jews. I know some Jews still just believe in the Old Testament. They don't believe that the New Testament, that Jesus already came. But for those that believed, they say that it was never supposed to be split in half and be called old and new. It's supposed to be one complete book. So from front to back, our Bibles are there to correct us, to show us what is wrong and to teach us the fear of the Lord so that we live a holy life. Luke 10, 27.
The man answered, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all and all your strength, and all you and, and all your might, and love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. Very important. It says you must love God with all your heart. Well, if you truly love God, you will have fear of the Lord. You will really focus on when you want to do something that you really desire doing. If you truly love to God the way you should, you will always ask yourself first, is this what God would want me to do? You won't just live a life thinking that there's grace for everything. You can do everything that you want. We really need to understand that God is absolutely love. God is absolutely good. But he also has the other side. If we're doing wrong, there is going to become, there's going to be discipline. He loves us too much to let us go astray. He will discipline us. And there will be consequences. If we like it or not, there will be because he loves us. A father that loves his child will correct it. And so will God. He will correct us. He will correct us if we will walk the wrong way. Luke 9, 23 and 25. Then he said to the crowd, If any of you want to be my follower, you must give up your own way. Take up your cross daily and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And what do you be benefit if you gain the whole world but are yourselves lost or destroyed? So anyone is a if anyone is ashamed of me and my message, the Son of Man will be ashamed of the person that he, re when he returns in the, in his glory and in the glory of the Father and the holy angels. You see, it's very, very, very important that we fear God and that our lives matter. Like. We need to give up our own life. I know there are so many TV shows that our flesh would really want to see. But we can not. We can't watch them because God says we're supposed to be different. We're supposed to be holy. We're supposed to watch our eyes. Well, if we fill ourselves with murder and all these evil things, well, that is just who we are going to become. So it's very important that we are careful. What are we watching? I remember for in our home, we are very careful what we watch. And sometimes I remember one time one of my sons came up and he said, well, mom, my friends are watching it. They're Christians. Just because they call themselves Christians, sometimes they don't have the relation I mean, the revelation about um, what is what you can and cannot watch, they think that those things don't matter. But some people, they clearly have that relate, um, revelation, but they simply don't care because they think there's grace for everything. It is extremely important. I remember he said, Mom, but they're Christians. They're watching it. Well, is your friend your compass? Is your friend... The one that shows you the direction and the path to heaven. Absolutely not. It is God. Well, if the Bible says no, the answer is simply no. It doesn't matter if other Christians watch it or if your friends watch it and they say it's okay. That doesn't matter because they are not your compass, but God is. God is the one that directs your path. And if we fear him, then and if we really want to live a holy life, then if God says no, that is just no. And if you're with friends, he says, if we will be ashamed of Jesus, when he will return, he will be ashamed of us. Well, if we're with friends and they're watching ungodly stuff that we know as a Christian, we should not be watching it. It's very important that you step up 
and you either walk out of that room or you are bold enough to just tell your friends, um, I'm going to walk out because I don't think this is right for us to watch it because I'm the temple of God. I should keep my temple clean and I don't want to fill myself with this filth and walk out. They might think you're fools, but that's okay because you're not ashamed of God. You're not ashamed of who your father is and who you're following. You can't tell them not to watch it, but you can be bold enough to say, as a temple of God, I'm not going to fill myself with this filth. And you can walk out, and if they ask you why, well, as a temple of God, I should not be watching this. So you're going to walk out, and then they can decide to turn it off or keep on watching. You know, it's absolutely important that in every area of our life, that we take our life seriously, and that we make sure our lives are holy. Exodus 20, 3 and 7. You must not have any other gods before me. You must not make for yourselves an idol of any kind or an image of anything in the heavens or on the earth or in the sky. You must not bow down to them or worship them. If I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God who will not tolerate your affection for any other gods, I lay this sin, I lay the sins of the parents upon their children. An entire family is affected even children in the third and fourth generations or those who reject me but i leave on failing love for a thousand generation on those who love me and obey my commandments you must not measure the name of the lord your god misuse the name the lord of your god you see this is so important you must not make other gods before me we must trust god with all of our hearts we can't put our trust in money or put our trust in our friends that they know what they're doing if i would just do what they do i should be good no we go back to God because God is our compass. We do not trust in anything else but God alone. We don't put our trust in anyone else or in anything else. See, and it says, you must obey my commandments. Well, as some people say, the Old Testament, like my dad always said, it isn't for us. And it says, you must obey my commandments. Well, the commandments isn't for us. It is no longer for us. Well, let us look into the New Testament to see if, if the commandments are really no longer for us. It is very important that we study our Bible from front to back. Remember what it said. It says all scriptures. It did not say just the New Testament. It said all scriptures is written there for us to learn the ways of the Lord. So in the commandments... It doesn't mean Jesus came, now we don't need him anymore. You know what? It's very important that we study our Bible from front to back. And if we find it in the New Testament that it says this specific thing, we no longer need to do. Then we know what they did in the Old Testament. We no longer need to do it. But if we don't find a specific thing that says this and that thing is no longer for us, then we need to follow what the Old Testament says because it is written there to help us walk in the right path. Just like murder. They weren't supposed to kill one another and the, Old, the New Testament is saying the same thing. There's so many things that just because Jesus came does not mean that they changed. James 2.17 So you see, faith by itself isn't enough. Unless it produces good deeds, it is dead and useless. We cannot call ourselves a Christian 
and say that there is grace for everything. I can do what I want. I can dress the way that I want, like so many girls do these days. That they don't dress themselves properly. They show off things that are sacred. They think that grace is for everything. No, we need to be serious with the walk that we walk because God is a serious God and he wants us to live a holy life. And if we don't show it, then the question is there, are you a true believer? I know when we first come to the faith, we need a renewal of the mind. We have to grow in our faith layer by layer. We have to, our minds have to be renewed. But if you are a Christian for years and years and you look at your life and all you see is the, is your old you, then you need to ask a question. What am I doing wrong? Am I really following? Because the old must die. The old must go and you shall be renewed and your works shall change because faith without works is dead. There has to be something to show for what you believe. And that is why it's important. Again, we live a holy life that, that people can see who you belong to, that they don't need to question like, does this person really belong to God? Like our lives should be so holy that we don't that they don't need to question who you belong to. Matthew 5, 17 and 19. Don't misunderstand why I have come. Jesus is saying, do not misunderstand why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses. I did not come to, to say that that doesn't matter anymore or the writings of the prophets. See, the Old Testament is full of prophecy. He says, I have not come to abolish it. No, I came to accomplish their purpose. I tell you the truth until Heaven and earth disappear. None of the smallest details of God's law will disappear until its purpose is accomplished. So if you ignore the least commandment and teach others to do the same, you will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But anyone who obeys God's law and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Do we understand how important it is to study our Bible front to back? That we need to take everything that is written because God's word, the Bible is really God's heart, what he, his desire is for us. It's just a glimpse of who God is and we need to study it front to back. And the commandments are not all abolished. Jesus came to fulfill them. And we need to understand that we need to follow everything that God's word is saying. Not only some, but everything. Colossians 2.8 Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophers and hip-soundling nonsense that comes from human thinking and from the spiritual power of this world rather than from Christ. Don't let anyone tell you that you can take your Christian walk lightly. Don't let anyone tell you that, oh, there's grace. This doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Don't let anyone trick you into thinking that Grace has covered everything. Now you can live however you want. Because that is not true. That is already demonic. That is already from the devil. That Those teachings are not from the Lord. You need to be careful. Whenever someone tells you something, you need to test the spirits. Make sure you think about it. Make sure you pray about it. Make sure you read and if you cannot find that in the word of God, then you know it's false doctrine and you do not believe what they're telling you. Ephesians 5, 6 to 10.
Ephesians 5, 6, all the way through 10. Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse their sins, for the anger of God will fall on all who disobey him. Are you hearing it? Are you hearing children? Yes. I'll read this verse again. My heart is just in so much pain when I look around at Christians these days. There are so many that do not take their walk seriously with God. And I sure hope you children will understand that our walk, if we call ourselves followers of Christ, that every inch of our being will show it who we belong to. Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse their sins, for the anger of God will fall on all who disobey him. Don't proclaim in the things those people do, for once you were full of darkness, but now you have light from the Lord. So live as people of light. Before you were born again, you were full of darkness. You were full of unrighteousness. You were full of ungodly deeds. But now that you have come through the faith, let your lights shine. Let the world see who you belong to. When you play, when you work, when you go to stores, let the world see who you belong to. For this light within you produces only what is good and right and true. You see, if you really have Christ in you, it will only produce what is right and good. You will be able to resist the devil. You will be able to resist the wrong things. And the light and the truth will show through you if you're going to take your life seriously because Christ will help you. Careful, determine what pleases the Lord. Careful, determine what pleases the Lord. Even when you go to a store and you want to buy stuff, first ask yourself, if I will buy this toy, is this something that will please the Lord? There are many toys that look beautiful, that look fun. But if you do your research, why they created the toys? They created it for one purpose, to destroy children. I know mermaids are very beautiful. For you that don't know what a mermaid is because you have not been exposed to ungodly toys, it is a Barbie that is half man, half fish. Half woman. They can be man or woman. But they're, they're half fish and half human. Those toys should never ever be in a Christian home. If we do our research, the number one purpose why they created the toys is to bring demons into your life because there is a demonic force behind it to destroy children from a young age on that they will not be able to live out the purpose of God. And so are there many other toys. And not just toys, there are clothes. They might look good, but then they have a symbol on them that represents pure evil, that represents Freemasons or other things. We shall be careful. We shall always discern when we buy something. Is this pure? Is this okay? Is this what the Lord will allow me to wear or to play with? And the same when we go to restaurants. I know it is very hard to live a completely holy, free life in this world. It is extremely hard because the world has so much to offer. Even Starbucks. We have never tried it ourselves, and I'm so thankful that the Lord has protected us from it. Everyone talked about how good Starbucks coffee was, and so I thought, it is more on the expensive side. I really believe in we should be wise with our money that the Lord has entrusted us with. But I thought, you know what, as a special treat, maybe one day we're going to go to Starbucks, we're going to try to see if the coffee is really that good as people say. And the exact same week as I was thinking that, thinking that I was going to talk to my husband about it and see if we could go there one day just for a special treat. 
I received a message and I truly, truly believe that the Lord sent that message my way to protect us. He talked about how wrong Starbucks was. And I'm like, it's just a coffee. Like, seriously, man? Like, really do I have to? Like, how hard can life really get? <clears throat> but I thought, you know what? It's so important we discern everything. I was going to do my research. And I researched. I found so much demonic activity behind the logo of Starbucks. Really, the logo that they have is a mermaid. Well, if we look and if we listen to Satanists, what they're some that have come out of Satanism and believe in Jesus Christ, what force is behind that? Well, then that tells me we cannot drink that coffee. We cannot support that company. That is something as a child of God we need to stay away from. Some people might say we are fools. Like seriously, do you really really have to be so careful like it, it just makes your life miserable it does not make my life miserable it is hard it's not easy christ never said following him would be easy but some might say you're over exaggerating you're just over exaggerating well i rather over exaggerate my life and have god please be pleased with me than just enjoying life and let God be angry at me or even put me through some consequences that I didn't have to go through if I would have been obedient. We never hear, I have never heard a testimony where someone, we know some people, they, they died according to the doctors, but really they weren't dead yet because their spirit came back, God sent it back, right? So they weren't really dead, they were just asleep. I, we have never heard any testimony where God said, you over-exaggerated your life, so you know what? You have to go to hell for this. No. He always convicted them of sins that they did wrong. He convicted them of telling them, even in dreams, that you're doing this wrong and that wrong. You need to change this. You need to change that. God never said, you're over-exaggerated, so I'm, I'm upset. So i rather over-exaggerate and have God be happy with me than... Taking everything lightly and then on judgment day, God has to say, I never knew you. You didn't take your walk seriously with me. Your fruit never showed that you belong to me. I really don't care if people think we're over-exaggerating. And you shouldn't either. You should rather take it seriously then think that there's grace for everything. You, your life just don't really matter. Your life matters a lot, and it matters to God. Luke 9, 26. Jesus replied, What does the law of Moses say? How do you read it? Luke 9, okay, hold on, I'm at the wrong verse. Luke 9, 26. If anyone is ashamed of me and my message, the Son of Man will be ashamed of the person when he returns in his glory and in the glory of the Father and the Holy Angels. Well, we already had that verse. Must have written it down twice. But it's so important that we're not ashamed of God, that we rather look like fools to others, but understand that God is proud of what we're doing. Hebrews 10, 26 and 29. Dear friends, if we deliberately continued sinning after we have received knowledge of the truth, there is no longer any sacrifice that will cover these sins. Are you hearing it, children? If we already have the knowledge if we already know that God says this and that thing, I shall not do, and we still do it. There is no longer a sacrifice. Jesus did not die for those sins that we already know we should not be doing. He died for those that we did not know about yet. But he didn't 
die for those sins. You know, if we already know that's wrong, we continue living in it. Jesus didn't die for us so we can take our lives that, that our lives don't matter. Our lives matter. He did die for us, but only if we take it seriously. There is only the... Hold on. I'm a little nervous today, but that's okay. We learn as we go, right? There is only the terrible expectancy of God's judgment and the re raging fire that will consume his enemies. You see what God is saying? If we won't take our life seriously, that fire of hell is waiting for us. We cannot call ourselves followers of God, but yet live like there is no father that rules over us. For anyone who refused to obey the law of Moses was put to death without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Listen carefully. Just think of how much worse the punishment will be for those who have trampled on the Son of God and have traded the blood of Jesus, traded the blood of the covenant with made us what which made us holy as if it were common and unholy and have insulted and disdainish the Holy Spirit who brings God's mercy to us. Hebrews is talking to believers. He says, how much greater, how much greater is that punishment going to be for those that trampled upon the blood of Jesus? If we do not take our lives seriously, if we just think that the blood of Jesus is over everything, it just talks so deep to me. Our punishment will be greater than those that have never confessed Jesus as Lord. I'm not here to scare you children. But I am here to teach you to fear God, to live holy lives. God's fear is not there to scare us, but to help us, but to direct our path back to heaven. First John 2, 1 and 6. First John 2, 1 to 6. My dear children, I am writing this to you so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, you know what? Like I said, I am not here to scare your children. I am absolutely not here to scare you that constantly when you make a small mistake, you are afraid. What's God going to do? What's God going to do? Because that's how I grew up. No. Like I said, God's fear is there to help us to walk in righteousness and in holiness. Now we're going to look at another part of God. Dear children, I am writing this to you so that you... So that to you, so that you will know not sin. But if anyone does sin, if you make a mistake, we have an advocate who pleads our case before the Father. <clears throat> he is Jesus Christ, the one who is truly righteous. He himself is the sacrifice that Adron's for the sins, and not only our sins, but the sins of all the world. And we can be sure that we know him if we obey his commandments. He has died for us. If we mess up, if we make a mistake, God is pleading there by our Heavenly Father for us. I mean, Jesus is pleading there in heaven by, by the Heavenly Father for us. 
So it doesn't mean when you mess up, oh, judgment is upon you. No, don't be afraid. Ask God to forgive you. Ask him, God, I'm sorry I messed up. Please help me that I will do better next time. And the Holy Spirit will help you. As we're going to read on, you're going to see that God has provided everything for us to live a holy and a righteous life. If someone claims, I know God, but doesn't obey God's commandments. You see, it's in the New Testament. If someone claims to know God, but does not obey God's commandments, that person is a liar and is not living in the truth. But those who obey God's word truly show how com completely they love him. You see, just like it says, if we truly love God, if we truly, truly love him, we will obey his commandments. And that's going to show how much we love our father. That is how we know we are living in him. Those who say they love, they live in God, should li live their lives as Jesus did. If we say we love God, then our lives should show it. Our lives should show that we walk like Jesus did. Holy, sacred, apart from the world. We should look different than the world, not like the world, that people have to question if we even belong to God. Very, very, very important. Ezekiel 36, 27. And if I put my spirit in you so that you will follow my di directions and be careful to obey my regulations. We all know when we become born again, God places his spirit in us. And if he has placed his spirit within you, that spirit is giving you the strength the wisdom and the knowledge to direct you to the path that God has for you, to obey his regulations. God has regulations. God has rules. Just like mom and dad have rules in the home with certain things, that's exactly who God is. Whatever happens in the flesh, is only revealing what is already in the spirit. We have rules. God has put it in. The parents have to have rules in the home so that the house goes smoothly. And that's just how God is. And this, the spirit is so much more real than a fleshly world. God, we have a law in this world that only represents the law of God. Whatever is in the flesh has already happened in the spirit. We have to understand how the spirit realm works, and then life makes so much more sense. Deuteronomy 5.33 Stay on the path that the Lord your God has commanded you to follow. Stay on it, children. Don't depart from it with wrong teachings, wrong doct doctrines. That's why it's so important. You study God's word yourself. Don't just depend on what people tell you. It's so extremely important that you study the word of God front to back. And when people talk to you, that you right away can discern where this is coming from. Then you will live long and prosperous. Live in the land you're, you are about to enter and here it talks about the Israelites, but entering into the promised land. But it's the same for us, because if we're going to obey God's regulations, his commands, if we're going to follow in his footsteps, he promises us he's going to give us a long life. And we all know if we live ungodly lives, so many people's lives are cut short. Because they did not follow God. They didn't follow what God has had called them to do. A lot of people's lives are being cut short just because of that. 2 Thessalonians 2, 15 and 16. We 
with all with all these things in mind I know it was a lot today children I gave you a lot but it's extremely important that if you learn the ways of the Lord from a young age that is so important so that you will not depart from it with all these things in mind dear brothers and sisters stay firm and keep a strong grip on the teachings we passed on to you both in person and by letter now may the lord jesus christ himself and god our father who lives who loves us and by his grace give us eternal comfort and a wonderful hope may the lord god almighty through jesus christ and the holy spirit give you the strength and the comfort to walk holy to make sure your temples are clean and holy you do not fill it with filth through anything hebrews 13 20 and 21 Now may the God of peace who brought up from the may oh my reading today that's okay how may, now may the God of peace who brought up from the dead our Lord Jesus the great shepherd of the sheep and ratified on eternal covenant with his blood may he equip you with all you need for doing his will may he produce in you truth and power of jesus christ every good thing that is pleasing to him all glory to him forever and ever amen and amen May Jesus Christ and his peace give you peace not to fear God, but to have enough fear of him when you do wrong, that you know if you will not repent, consequences is coming your way, just as when you disobey your parents. May God's peace rule in your hearts and equip you to do only what is good and to produce fruit for Jesus Christ so that no one has to question where you belong to.